Hello everyone and welcome to the set 1 of Ambiguity in CFG Solve Problems. In this session and in the next session as well, we will observe some interesting problems. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will observe two solve previous year questions on finding ambiguous context-free grammars. Consider this question. Determine whether the following grammar is suitable for predictive parsing. So this is the grammar. And the productions are S can be written as left parenthesis, S, right parenthesis, or SS or epsilon. Well, this one's clearly a CFG as the left hand side has only one non terminal that is S. By the way, predictive parser is the recursive descent parser. And we will learn about it in details in the next chapter. However, we still can answer this. If you all remember, in the previous session I told you that, except the operator precedence parser, all the other parsers reject ambiguous grammars. So if we can determine whether this grammar is ambiguous or not, we can state whether this one is suitable for predictive parsing. If it is ambiguous, it's not suitable. So let's try to solve this. Now using the parse tree derivation procedure, Let's try to derive the string having three pairs of parentheses. Well, the reason for using parse tree derivation is, it's actually the quickest and most popular approach. Also with this, we can visualize the ambiguity. So let's begin with the start symbol. Now we will use the second rule, that is, S can be written as SS. So S derives SS. Now from this S, using the first rule, we will derive the left parenthesis, then S, and then the right parenthesis. And from this S, using the second rule, we will derive two more S. Since one pair is already generated, we will derive another pair from this S, and another one from this one. Now we can also generate epsilon, that is empty string for S. So from all these S, we will derive epsilon only. Now traversing the tree from top to bottom and left to right, we obtain 1, 2, 3, that is 3 pairs of parentheses. Let's now try out another way. So we will again begin with the start symbol S. Now applying the second rule, from this S, we will derive SS. Now this time, instead of this S, let's derive SS from this S. Now applying the first rule, that is, S can be written as S enclosed in parenthesis. From this S, we derive the left parenthesis S and the right parenthesis, that is, the last pair of parentheses. Using the same rule, this S will help us derive the first pair, and this one will derive the second pair. Now, in order to complete the derivation process, let's derive epsilon from all these S. Now, if we traverse the parse tree top to bottom and left to right, we will end up acquiring three pairs of parentheses. Therefore, since for the derivation of the same string, we obtain two different parse trees, clearly the grammar is ambiguous, hence not suitable for predictive parsing. Now, let's move on to the next question. Observe this question. Consider the following two grammars. So, two grammars G1 and G2 are given, and they have their respective production rules. Now, the question is, which of the following option is correct? A. Only G1 is ambiguous. B. Only G2 is ambiguous. Or C. Both G1 and G2 are ambiguous. D. Both G1 and G2 are unambiguous. So basically, we have to test whether G1 or G2 is ambiguous. So let's try to solve it. Let's begin with G1. Now, G1 states, S can be written as SBS or A. So, let's try to derive the string ABABA. So, as usual, we will begin with S. Now, from S, we can either derive this or only A. Since we want to derive this, so clearly, we will have to choose the first rule. So, S derives SBS. Observe the intended string. We have derived one B, we will need another. So from this S, using the same rule, we can again derive SBS. 
Now from all these S, let's derive A. Let's now traverse the tree. So the yield is AB, AB, A. Yes, we have derived the string. Let's now try out another way, if there is any. So we will begin with S, and the first level of derivation will remain the same. Now instead of this S, let's derive SBS from this S. So what we did? We derived the rightmost B of the string first, and then we derived the leftmost B. Now again, let's derive A's from all these S. So the yield is A, B, A, B, A. So since in order to generate the string A, B, A, B, A, we obtained more than one parse trees, therefore G1 is certainly ambiguous. Now let's try out G2. So G2 states, S can be written as small a capital B or small a small b. Then a can be written as uppercase a uppercase b or small a. Finally, b can be written as uppercase a uppercase b small b or small b. Let's try to derive the string ab. Now, starting from the start symbol s, if using the first part of the first rule that is S can be written as small a capital B, we can derive small a capital B. Now, using the rule B can be written as small b, from this b, we can derive the lowercase b. So, the traversal will yield small a small b. Then, again starting from the start symbol S, if we use the rule S can be written as small a small b, we can directly derive the intended string. Since for only generating a, b, we are having two different parse trees, clearly g2 is also ambiguous. Therefore, the option c, that is both g1 and g2 are ambiguous, is the correct choice. So, in this session, we observed two solved previous year questions on finding the ambiguous CFGs. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe another set of solved problems. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.